Hello guys and welcome to Zuluk Fishing. If you guys are subscribed to this channel, you'll, you would have seen the two videos that I uploaded last week with some big fish in it, serious, serious big fish. And um, if you're not yet subscribed, please do so, so you will not miss out on future videos. So, why am I doing this video? After those videos last week, I had a lot of questions on what trays to use and how do I make my trays. So I thought it would be very well fit if I do a Tackle Tuesday for you guys. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you the exact trays that what I use to catch big fish and successfully land them. So let's get right down to the video. So firstly, you'll need a serious hook. This hook that I use is the 14.0 BKK inline. Um, this one isn't brand new. I just took it off of my trays from fishing this weekend. So it is a second hand hook, but so there's a number of hooks that I use. I use my Stats 12, my Stats 12 O's, um, I use BKK's, um, but recently I've been using BKK's quite a lot and I really love them. Um, that big black ray that I caught in last week's video, if you have not seen that video yet, it is down, the link will be down in the description. That was on a 12 O BKK inline and I pulled that fish really hard and that hook held up perfectly. So I really love that hook. So hook selection is very critical. And then also the wire that I use is either JDB carbon coated wire or um, the Fishmate carbon coated wire, 150 pound, 175 pound, or the 200 pound. But from today's video, I'm just going to use the 150 pound for illustration purposes. But if you fish for those big fish, I'll recommend for using nothing under 150 pound. 175 pound being my favorite. It ties knots like it doesn't kink up and is more than strong enough to handle any big fish. But um, yeah, today I'm just going to use the 150 pound. There's also going to be some one or two tips that I'm going to show you guys on um, the, the swivels that I use and limited slides. So to start this race, we start off with our wire. Let's take it out of the packet. Well, you get different wires. You get um, a bleeding wire, then you get nylon coated, and then you get carbon coated. I don't really mind the color or anything, but I just um, prefer carbon coated because of the way it, how it ties knots. So, you're going to start off just measuring. This is going to be your bottom section, about, and then the top section. Just get more out. I like it really long trace, and I'm going to explain to you guys why I use a long trace and um, what lengths to use. I don't measure any of my traces. But this time I know exactly what I need and how long it should be. But I'm just going to give you guys a roughly um, a rough indication on, on the lens that I use. So it's basically, this is a bit too long, but um, basically two full arm lens or the whole length of my arms that I open and a little bit extra for tag ends and all that stuff. But the idea is to get the trace as long as possible that you can handle with your costs. The longer your drop is, the longer your trace could be. So, you start off with a normal snell knot on the circle hook. Push it from the inside, the side where the hook is. Push it in. So once you have it on the inside, just put that down, the tag in down with your thumb. And then I start turning it nice and tight from the top to the bottom that's about six or seven times or eight times whatever it's not necessary for quite a lot and then you take your top end as your normal snail knot and you push it through so there you go I know some guys like to put shrink over over the knot and then burn it and all sorts of stuff that it doesn't un untie but I don't do all that stuff it's really not necessary just a simple sound knot through and um, yeah there you go your hook is on so roughly you want your 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 bottom section of your trace but roughly well 80 centimeters that'll be the the bottom section of your trace what is so I'm gonna add a stopper here there's two different ways of doing a, of adding a stopper I'm gonna show you the way that I use the most important part about where you place your stopper uh, 
and the reason for full metal is that the top section of your trace should be longer than the bottom section than the actual trace because what happens is if your trace is in the water and there that's going to your main line and there's your stopper if your bait is washing around like this it shouldn't go over the top section of your trace because if let's say in the water your trace is, is like that and, and it's very close so the shark comes and wants to eat your bait and this section is over um, the top section of your or your bait is over the top section of your your trace um, it's not going to bite you off if this top section is longer than the bottom section but if it is short and it's going to be on your in the bait's going to be very close to your leader there's a very big chance it's going to bite your leader off so it's not a lot of the guys think that the fish or the shark ate him up all the way to to where his leader is no that's not the case that was because the top section of this um trace was shorter than the bottom section and your your, your bottom section of your trace washed over your swivel onto your leader and the shark came to eat your bait and they bit, he bit onto your leader and he bit you off so that's the reason that's very um, important why you need to place this um, stopper at the right at the right distance from your hook also right distance from your top swivel so there's different ways of using a limited slide trace here so i'm not going to make that stopper yet because i'm just going to do it in, in in the steps that i usually make my trace so the one the one method is you can put a, a small bead a swivel and another bead like that so this is where you can attach your sinker line that's going to slide on your on the top section of your full metal it's going to slide all the way to the stopper like i said i'm still going to add the stopper but it's going to slide all the way but what i what i found with this is once there's pressure on this it pigtails your trace quite a lot and then you have to change the top section and, and, and stuff like that so i'm not really um, a big fan of it but if i don't have anything else this is what i use so i'm going to give you two tips today the, to overcome this and help your trace last longer my first solution is a t-swivel this is a football shape bead with a swivel inside and um, this is my favorite favorite method of using but you don't always get them you don't always find them there's different types of t-swivels that you can buy um, because there's no direct pressure from the swivel onto you onto your um, wire it doesn't pigtail it so there's a lot of bigger area to cover cover does not pigtail it other way other method that i use when i don't have any two swivels is that i make my own t-swivel i'm going to show you guys i use it i make it by using a cotton bud so you're just gonna snip it off so once you cut it off you take a little swivel and you push it through like that just move it a little bit in take a lighter just burn it a little bit just slowly okay there we go just so you can just so it makes an edge so the swivel doesn't slip off but the swivel goes on really tight you need to find the right size of swivel and then let's cut it off and do the exact same thing on the other side so there you have your own homemade tea swivel. It takes you less than a minute to make the thing. I usually just make a couple and leave them in my bag and use them as I need them. So then what you can do is once again just add the bead. You add that little tea swivel. Why I do add still why I still add the beads with this cotton bud is that if you use this quite a lot, um, the, the cotton bud is, is quite soft and um, they do tend to tear and, you know, break or whatever. But that's only after a, cu a couple of throws. Uh, then you still have the, the bead there as a knot protection or a stopper. So that's how I'll fish it. But I have these swivels, so I'm going to just gonna put my T swivel through. There we go. Slide our T swivel. You'll notice there's no stopper yet, it's going to slide all the way through. It's going to get the length of my trace. 
say this should be an almost an arm length and this is like an arm length to just over my shoulder get yourself in the habit of you know using your own body as as measurements the way you want it just leave a little extra and then guys very very important is using the right swivels um, i use nothing else than japan power swivels guys these things are amazingly strong and um, you have to have a very strong swivel guys you have to have a really strong swivel you have to remember that this swivel takes all the pressure it's the main connection from your leader to your trace so this swivel needs to be of absolute the best quality that you can find and the japan power swivels does just that that thing is amazingly strong so there's a couple of knots that you can tie here you can do a figure eight and um different ways but i'm going to show you the knot that i use and why i use that knot i really love that knot it's not the easiest to make but once you have it, it it's it's not difficult to make but it's a bit uncomfortable to make so but once you you, you um mastered how to make this knot it works like a charm so firstly you put your, your swivel in and you hold it you have to have a nice firm grip on this hold it between your thumb and your index finger and you then just, just turn around the swivel. We'll see. Two turns. And this is where you need to, to keep it. You need to keep a firm grip there. Just pull this one a bit down. And then, very important. Let me get closer. Very important. You'll see there is your trace going through. And there's the swivel. There's the gap. It needs to go in between that swivel and your trace going out. Just pull it through. Also, you need to check this, this little loop here. Sometimes it twists and it goes over there, but very important, you need to pull it very tight. What I usually do, I just pull it into position. I take my sinker like this. I hook it into my swivel, that little clip there. I hold it, I take my pliers and I just pull it. Okay. So you can see there. Okay. So once I have that, I just give it a little kinky there so it goes straight and then again I use my sinker again here okay and then I just start turning the tag end around my um, trace so once I have that one or two over I have it in place and then I can just use my hands to so just carry on turning them. So this is you need to make sure that your swivel is big enough to make this knot and that your wire is the right thickness for your swivel. Just trim the tag in off. You don't need to set pliers. Or no instead of side cutters. Well, and there's the knot. Why well, I like this knot is you can see it stays straight, the swivel. See that swivel? It stays straight one of once I hold it like this. So that prevent so that prevents um your trace to tangle with your 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 um, leader and yeah, it's just just keeps everything straight uh, no tangles with your leader so that's just why i like this knot when you tie them there the swivel moves like that and your trace can you know just easier to twist especially if there's a bit of current in the water i just love this knot strong as hell and um, works good for me so when i make my traces this is how i, I make them and how i pack them in my bag um, i just leave 
this tea swivel on here and I don't put any stop it in. The reason why is when I, once I get to the water, I know what I want to do. Do I want my trash shorter? Do I want it longer? Then I add my stopper. There's different ways of adding a stopper. Some guys put a put a sleeve on here and uh, a sleeve or a crimp and then you just squash squash that crimp where you want that stopper to be. But I don't like that crimp. Usually um, you don't know did you squash it tight enough? Is it not tight enough? Um, when you squash it did you um, damage your wire and it tends to rust a bit when it's in your tackle bag on that crimp. So what I use, I use a piece of um, Mona to as a stopper. I just take about 30 centimeter, 30 to 35 centimeter, long enough to make a trace. Um, don't use too thin. If you use um, too thin Mona, that stopper is not going to do its work. It's going to slip and um, it's going to be frustrating. So what I use, I use 0.90. So 0 0.9 millimeters of Mona. And um, you can use 0 0.80, maybe a 1 mole, but I found that 0 0.90 does the job perfectly. So this is what I use. So let me show you guys what I do. So we know what the distance is that we want our stopper. It's going to be close to 80 centimeters, 60 to 80 centimeters. Just take my mono, and it's basically like a, a figure eight or... Um, a Rosita, you can you can use the Rosita method as well, but I just do it like a figure eight. I just turn it around my my index finger about five or six times around my trace and around my finger all at once, and I just push it through, and then very important, I open it up. Do you see that everything is opened up? And then I pull both ends, just not tight yet, just so it starts to form. Okay, you can see there it's forming. Then obviously, like all not, all knots, you wet it. Check that everything's in place. Check you have the right distance. Um, yeah, it seems okay. Just gonna move it a bit down. And then make a little loop on the one side. a little loop on this one side and then another loop on the other side okay there we have it so make sure it's lubricated again and then we just take our hands and we pull away from each other you can see that not that's it You can see that not coming together nicely. Okay. So there's our stopper added. So there's our stopper added. A piece of mono has a stopper. Um, it's not trimmed really nice here. Yeah. It's not trimmed this. Okay. So there's our stopper added. You know when your stopper is tight enough, as you, when you can see there's a little kink in, in the, um, the wire. Then you know the stopper is, is tight enough and it's not going to move. If you're not going to do this tight enough, it's going to slip and it's going to be very frustrating. So make sure that the stopper is tight enough. So just to complete my trace, I'm going to show you guys how I've completed a thin piece of um, mono point. 7.0 and I like to go really thinner um, especially on the beach it's not necessary to go thinner 0.70 and I tie that to the T swivel I just use a normal blood knot it's not necessary for the best knot in the world here because if that sinker does break off not the end of the world you actually want it to break off especially when you're stuck so just a normal blood knot and then we measure my, my sinker trays Remember, there's going to be a dangle on here, and you need to go longer than your dangle. Right. That's my sinker. For the guys that's not familiar with a dingle dangle, um, I did a video on how to make your own dingle dangles. I'll also put that in 
in the description so I go have a look at uh, so I go and have a look at the video descriptions there will be um, a link to how to make your own jingle dangles um, and then use them they're awesome they work magic so that is my complete trace see it's longer if your dangle is gonna hook you if your dangle is underneath underneath your hook here you're gonna clip your sinker on, onto your dangle and um, you're gonna throw it like that perfect so guys like I said this is how it should be see how long that top section is that's uh, more than a meter maybe 1.2 my stopper, my bottom section about 60 centimeters, and my stopper right here. So that's the idea behind this trace. The sinker is going to be there in the water, the boat's going to wash around, it's washing over your the top section of your trace. The shark cannot bite you off because it's biting onto wire. If this top section, let's say it's shorter than the bottom section, what's happening is it's going to wash over, that's going to be a leader, it's going to bite your leader off, and you're going to lose the fish or not even have a chance to land the fish because it bit you off so guys that's it for me um i hope you guys enjoyed this tackle tuesday i will try and make some more for you guys in the future it's just difficult to get the time to edit the things to make them and to fish and to do whatever my daily life but i will try and make some more if you guys have any suggestions on what i should do i already have a suggestion that i'm going to do next week on um, tackle tuesday i have a like a tip for you guys on to make your own dingle dangle on um it for edible fishing so be on the lookout to that one not to miss any videos please subscribe to my channel i will appreciate it cheers